Hi everybody, my name is Jonathan, welcome to this video. This is the first video in a video diary documenting the construction process of a drum studio I'm building. Each video in the series will deal with a different stage of the construction, starting of course here with the footings and the foundation. We started digging the hole in October and November 2015 and then unfortunately were held up by a turn in the weather. This is all clay soil. Uh, so it was quite difficult to dig out by hand, um, but we just about managed it. It's about 3 metres by 5 metres, which gives us a nice large floor space once finished. This was all planned beforehand. Uh, we filled certain regulations so we didn't need to apply for planning permission. This falls under permitted regulations. Uh, if this is something you're considering doing yourself, I would highly recommend you checking with your own authorities first before beginning, uh, because planning permissions can be tricky if you fall on the wrong side of them. There you can see the big pile of earth we've dug out and my dad there just putting the finishing touches to the wooden border which will sit around the edge of the foundation hole into which the cement for the foundations will be poured. Here we're actually just following a standard process for building foundations and footings. We start by digging the hole to the required depth and size and then we basically build it up layer by layer You'll notice a deeper trench running around the perimeter of the hole. This is because where the walls will go, so that section of the foundation needs to be deeper and stronger because it bears the most weight. That deeper section is about a foot deep, about 12 inches deep, and the main floor space is about 6 inches deep. These wooden stakes help keep the frame square and also keep it off the ground so we can continue to work on the hole and prepare it for the concrete. This string line provided a level that we can judge the depth from and also make sure that the frame is level. Once we were happy with the general position of the hole, we used this level to make sure we were getting a consistent depth all the way across the hole because we didn't want to end up with lumpy concrete once it was all finished. You can see a difference in smoothness between the side we've worked on and the side we've not yet done. With the hole finished and dug to depth, we can start adding layers onto the foundation. Directly onto the soil, we added a layer of hardcore and then compressed it flat. You can see here just around the edges where we've still got the hardcore, but we've added a layer of sand on top of this to provide a softer surface for the waterproof membrane to sit on. This is actually an incredibly complicated and high-tech method of getting the sand flat. With the hardcore and sand in place and roughly level, we're now just moving that wooden frame out of the way so we can fit the waterproof membrane underneath it. As I've said, we're just following a standard foundation procedure. The layers of sand and hardcore and the subsequent waterproof membrane are pretty standard to just help with moisture, keeping it separate from the cement which will pour on top. We want the layer of sand to be as flat and as smooth as possible. This will provide a consistent depth across the whole floor and provide a smooth surface for the rest of the flooring construction. Here you can see the waterproof membrane being folded into position. This goes on top of the layer of sand which is on top of the tampered layer of hardcore, which sits on top of the soil. There's the site foreman, just checking in, making sure we're all doing our jobs correctly. Satisfied, she wanders off to look for some small animal to kill. Finally, the membrane's in place so we can move the wooden structure back into position and we'll secure it permanently, which will provide the final dimensions for the concrete once we pour it. You can see a small white pipe in the corner there. That's going to come through the concrete, allowing us to place electric cabling in afterwards. We now jump forward to June 2016. As I said, we were held up by the weather and we took a break from the construction. 
The polystyrene insulation there is sitting directly on top of the waterproof membrane. We've got some bits of brick which we've sat the iron rebars on. This provides reinforcement for the concrete and the concrete is poured directly onto this. Again, this is pretty standard foundation procedure. The iron reinforcement bars are bound together by wire and that long beam just helps us smooth the concrete. Finally, after all that preparation, we're ready to pour the concrete. It was mixed on site and poured directly on top of the iron reinforcement bars. This is just standard C25 concrete which is used across most foundation holes. It basically means it can support 25 newtons of weight after 28 days, so we've got to wait about a month before we can actually build on it. With the concrete poured and smoothed, we're nearly done. Because we're using a timber stud construction, we're going around the edge of the cement while it's still wet, inserting these steel bolts. When these dry, these provide something solid to attach the base plates to. It's worth mentioning that this was very specifically planned out. We knew where everything had to be, we knew all the measurements, we'd already decided where every stud, every upright and every base plate was going to be, and this just shows you the process of installing them. Once the cement dries, we remove the wooden template, leaving us with the two vertical bolts to which we can attach the base plates. And that's about it. We leave it for 28 days, and then we begin construction. Thanks for watching everybody. In part two, we begin construction of the frames themselves, so stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.